Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thor News Fundraiser Bonus Blast, video number two. If you would like to help contribute to keep Thor News up and running, I got a snail mail, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron, and a whole lot of love for you, and only $746 left to raise today. So let's get to it. Guess what we're talking about? Now we're talking about our home star is uh, finish up the second part of this fill plate double header with an article about. In 1774 AD, the sun blasted Earth with the biggest storm in 10,000 years. Brought to us by the Bad Astronomer at the Bad Astronomy through the Sci-Fi Wire. We're taking a time machine back to the year 774 AD to find out that an enormously powerful blast of matter and energy from space slammed into Earth. Nothing like it had been felt on this planet for 10,000 years. We're talking about a mix of high energy light and hugely accelerated subatomic particles. When this wave impacted Earth, it changed our atmospheric chemistry enough to be measured centuries later. I'm pretty sure the Blue Beetle is uh, talking about now. That's when we measured it, somewhere around now or a couple years ago. Our pre electronic societies went entirely unaffected by it. But. Were this sort of event to happen today, the results would be bad. I bet they were affected by it. Like, I bet people had, like, migraines or extra emotions or were really tired or babies were born. You know, I, I bet they could feel it because I think we can feel solar flares and coronal mass ejections here on Earth in ways we don't understand. And I think sometimes it can even cause heart attacks. Okay. It was first discovered by an analysis of tree rings. Of all things i'd like to give a shout out to trees thank you trees you guys are awesome and always have been and you're so patient scientists found that the level of carbon 14 an isotope of carbon was much higher in rings that year than usual some years later looking at air samples from ice cores scientists saw that there were elevated levels of beryllium 10 and chlorine 36 as well I'm sort of skeptical of carbon daters because there's only like four of them on Earth and it's not like they let you carbon date whatever you want to. Anywho, that's neither here nor there, but it's everywhere. The common factor in all these elements is that they are created when extremely high energy subatomic particles hit Earth's air and ground. They slam into the nuclei of atoms and change them, creating these isotopes. The only way to get particles at energies like this is from space where powerful magnetic fields in exploding stars, for example, can accelerate the particles to such high speeds. We call these isotopes cosmogenic, made from space. I wonder what made the sun freak out that day, though. What could have created the space storm in 774 AD? The obvious candidate for such a thing is a very powerful solar flare. What else could it have been? An explosion on the sun created when an intense magnetic field lines tangle up and short circuit, releasing huge blasts of energy and particles. But the 774 event was so powerful that at first scientists were skeptical it could be from a flare. Once any other type of astronomical phenomenon was ruled out, though, a flare was all that was left. What about a gamma ray burst or cosmic energy burst? Cosmic Energy Ray, aliens, I just like saying aliens. A team of scientists has gone through the records to look at other such events in hopes of categorizing this flare compared to other known flares. What they found is that this event was by far more powerful than even some relatively scary modern flares. For example, in 1989, the sun erupted in a powerful series of flares as well as a huge coronal mass ejection. But if you need to shorten stuff, just call it a CME. As billions of tons of hydrogen plasma is ejected at high speed. And if plasma hits you in the face at like a million miles an hour, you might be in trouble. Definitely going to get a sunburn. That's just carrying its own magnetic field. This bout of space weather slammed into Earth's magnetic field, affecting it so profoundly that the electric currents were induced under the Earth's surface, called geomagnetically geomagnetically induced currents. This extra electricity blew out transformers in Quebec and caused a power outage that lasted for hours, bro. And I want to say that, like, 
I believe overall the sun is alive. The sun loves us. The sun remembers the day you're born. And that I think the sun is our protector. But, you know, a kernel mass ejection that wipes out our power grid is possible. But if that happened, we probably deserved it. Just saying. And we're looking at transformer damage. Um, is that Megatron? I just blanked on transformer names. Autobots and the Decepticons. That was it. In February of 1956 was the most powerful solar storm in the modern era. And we also had a really powerful one in 2012. Which was easily twice as strong as the 1989 event. Our power grid wasn't as heavily used at the time. So it didn't cause the same sort of damage as the 1989 event. But it was still a huge event. I'd like to take a second to point out just how resilient life is. You know, the fact that we can stay alive for anywhere from 30 to 100 years on this planet as humans is pretty amazing. And the fact that, like, for 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 years, everything we've been through, that civilization is still standing, well, that's pretty amazing as well. It's like a million miracles collectively rolled up into one. And I do hope I get to continue to be your planetary defense commander. Using various methods to characterize this 1956 storm, including measurements in visible light, radio waves, changes to the Earth's ionosphere, a high-altitude layer of ionized air that, when changes rapidly, can affect magnetometers on the ground that measure magnetic field strength. And more, they found that the 774 AD event was a staggering 30 to 70 times stronger. That means it was likely 100 times stronger than the one in 1989. That would definitely, um, frizzed your hair, at least. Ye gads, you would have felt it, that's all I'm saying. It's not clear how long the flare lasted. Most strong ones grow and decay in a matter of hours. But the total energy released in this flare was about the same as what the entire sun radiates in one second. Two times 10 to the 26 joules, or the equivalent of roughly... 10 billion one megaton bombs going off. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's a lot of energy. Enough to power our entire planet, given our current energy use, for 300,000 years. Ye gads. And wouldn't it be cool if somehow over the last 50, 70 years we'd figured out good solar power? I mean, the sun is just giving us tons of energy every day to use, but somehow we're still stuck on petroleum. Dinosaur blood. Asterisk. Zip zap pow. A flare like this is called a super flare, and until now it wasn't thought the sun could produce them. Other stars are more active magnetically, make them quite often. I think the sun can surprise you, bro. That has been a staple belief of Thor News since I started this over eight years ago. That nobody really knows a whole lot about the sun, and that it has the potential to absolutely surprise everybody on the planet. Maybe even itself. The scientists think that the 774 flare may have been a special circumstance where a powerful flare occurred near a streamer of gas called a filament, slamming it and accelerating the protons in it to such high energies. That's actually something of a relief. I'd prefer that it's hard, whoa, Phil, for the sun to do this, oh, Phil. We're climbing out of a solar minimum now. It's partially why things are so crappy. That, and you had, like, Pluto, Capricorn, and Jupiter in Capricorn. Oh, you had Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto in Capricorn. Which is why you had the plague breakout and stuff. Uh, but hopefully, we'll think, we're climbing towards a solar maximum in 2025, so things will continue to slowly improve. But I'm pretty sure, as I've been saying for a couple months, that this February is going to be kind of sucky. And, and, and it's definitely challenging. But hang in there. Such an event happening today would be catastrophic. It could take out numerous satellites, the particles, and high-energy radiation can short out even to hardened electronics and cause widespread blackouts. So it'd be like the sun did an EMP. Man, that sentence just made me EMP in my pants. Those could take a long time to fix, since the bigger transformers used by power grids cannot be mass-produced. And our power grid is from like the 60s, bro. It's like, I've been saying we should fix it and have a really good unified one, but uh, people are like, no. Okay. Some scientists calculated that the passengers on an international airplane flights could receive a lifetime dose of radiation for free 
in a few hours from such an event. And maybe you could turn into the Hulk, you know, like one out of a million, or Spider-Man. And then you'd be like, Sun Man, or Woman, Sun Woman. Okay. Yeah, bro, the effects on Earth can be difficult to determine. In part, it depends on whether the flare and CME's magnetic polarity, the north and south part of the magnetic field, is able to decouple, or couple, just couple, with the Earth's magnetic polarity. If it does, we get the blackouts and other damage. But some of the effects occur either way. Phil is going to note that we haven't seen as powerful an event since 774, though many have been quite strong. The sun erupted in 2012. Oh, there's the one I was talking about. And a coronal mass ejection that, had it hit Earth, would have been worse than the 1989 event. Happily, it was sent off in another direction. Yeah, I was covering that back then. Interesting times indeed. But it's clear that the sun can have some pretty big tantrums. And we need to take this seriously. Certainly, solar astronomers do. And as the sun ramps up into the newest magnetic cycle, we're looking at our star with everything they have. Although, like the telescopes are from 1995, like stereo, one of them broke. Uh, the SDO. It's weird that they put all this crap on Mars, but they're like, you know, the sun is the most important thing in our solar system. And they... I mean, they put up the Solar Parker Pro, but they sent us like one photograph. Anyway, you know, I don't know. Science is really weird, man. Especially space agencies. We don't know how strong this cycle will be. Although there are a lot of people on the internet, and especially the YouTubes, who think they know exactly how strong the next cycle will be and what the sun's going to do over the next 30 or 50 years. One prediction is that it will be no big deal. But another prediction says it will very much be a big deal. Well, thanks, Phil. I, I think it's going to be a stronger, I think it's going to be a strong solar cycle. We'll see what, because Earth needs it, man. We need all the help we can get, but we'll see. There's clearly a lot more we have to learn about the sun. Amen. High five on that, Phil. It's not an exaggeration to say that our modern lives depend on it. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's weird if you watch all, a bunch of films from the 40s, 50s, or 60s, or 70s. They were sure everything would be solar powered by now, but somehow... We, there was a major hitch in that plan. And so what will happen next? Like I said, I think the sun is our protector. We have one sunspot now. And, and the solar cycle has been overperforming so far. Will that continue over the next few years? We shall see. We will have to stay tuned. It's a cliffhanger. Just like Thor News. I've been doing my fundraiser, monthly fundraisers like this for like four or five years now. And uh, let's hope I, I get to continue. But I do this through you guys' help. And so if you'd like to help contribute, uh, I got a snail mail, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron with only $746 left to go today. This is video number two of my big blast. And thank you very much to everybody out there. If I do get to keep doing this, even if I don't, I have, I've really, this is my favorite job ever, being your planetary defense commander. I help keep civilization upstanding, but dude, it is getting sketchy these days. Thank you to everybody out there, and especially Alien Girl, Sandra, Barbara, Thomas, Caleb, the Texas Angel, Alexis, Lauren, Richard, Barbara, Scott, Glenda, Arnica, Light Soul, Dan, Marlita, Lisa, Daryl, Brian, KJ, Max, Laura, Donald, Pete, Joel, and Ellie. And you know what? If you actually stay this far, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm, I just wrote this poetry. It has nothing to do with anything. But I don't know what it's going to do with it. And I don't remember what it says. So I'll read it to you now. Happenstance and circumvention. Fix it all with a little prevention. All the miracle workers are stuck in detention. I want, funds with, I want fun with friends. Independent human expression. Keep your hands inside. What is your profession? Oh, their walls are crumbling. It's hard to look you in the eye when you're stumbling. Rain ride, we're all right tonight. Left all our problems behind for simple solutions and a peace of mind. It ain't a sin if everyone wins. Step forward and come on in. I ain't buying Armageddon or World War III. God gave the good life to you and me. All right. God bless everyone. Stay cool. And if you, if you, okay, great. You can leave me your poetry review 
in the comments. Peace out. Stay cool. God bless everyone. And I love you and I appreciate you, son. You are awesome. And I saw like the coolest sunrise I'd seen the other ever. So I'm not giving up hope. Never. I'm asking for your help. And, you know, I don't know. When I made my notes a couple months ago, I said like the 4th through the 16th, technically the 20th, was going to be really tough for me, definitely. And probably for a lot of people. And so this peak crap energy will peak out probably around the 16th and then hopefully things will start to improve around the 20th but we could have a really great spring and summer so let's hang in there for that all right stay cool